Hello dear students, I am Dr. Gunjan Saxena and in today's lecture, I have taken very interesting topic, Rasa Theory by Bharat Muni. It is related with Indian classical literature and now it has become very important because it has been included in the syllabus of MA also uh, in the paper entitled Literary Criticism and Theories. You will read this theory. Besides it, this topic can be very innovative in the field of research also. So without wasting the time, let's start. So far as literature is concerned, or for that matter, any piece of art, you can categorize them into two categories for your convenience. If you see these two categories, it will be very convenient for you to understand. One in which something is narrated to you, like reciting a poem or telling a story. And another form is uh, where something is shown to you. It can be a dance performance, maybe the work of art like a sculpture, painting, drama and so on. In ancient Indian literature, we see these two categories. One is known as Shrutik Kavya, as is uh, shown here in this PPT. And uh, Shruti Kavya can be uh, said in another term as narrative. And another is Drishya Kavya which can be said as performance. Usually, we associate Kavya with poetry. Kavya word is used in both of the terms here, Shruti Kavya and Drishya Kavya. So, it should be clarified to you that Kavya means uh, literature in general here. Shruti Kavya means something that is narrated to you like epic and Drishya Kavya includes everything that is presented and performed on the stage like dance, music, drama, mimicry, etc. Now in both Shruti Kavya and Drishya Kavya, there lies something which acts as the basic essence of literature. What is that something? What is that something? This something is well defined and explained by Bharat Muni in his book Natya Shastra. As you know, Bharat Muni was one of the greatest sages of India. He is considered the father of Indian theatrical art forms. His Natya Shastra is a Sanskrit treatise on the performing arts. The text consists of 36 chapters with a cumulative total of 6,000 shlokas. Shlokas means poetic verses. Here it should be noted that he was not a single person to write down the book. Means the whole credit doesn't go only to Bharat Muni to write down this book. Rather, it is considered that his followers and disciples have added some quotes after having the discussions with him and reaching the conclusions. The body of grammar and content of this book is completed with the efforts of all of them. Main topics which are covered in the in this treatise Natya Shastra are action, dance, music, and rasa. Now, action, dance, and music. These three things means these are the sources to present rasas. Here again, it should be clear to you that the concept of rasa is not only about Natya. Uh, pay emphasis on the word Natya Shastra. Natya, which is used here, it, it doesn't include only Nataka. Rather, it includes dance, music, theater, cinema, painting, sculpture, and even literature. That's why Natya refers to whatever is performed on the stage, not the only Nataka. And Shastra means here, a book which defines the codes, the rules and makes the whole concept. So in this book, we find salient features of Natya and Rasa along with Bhava, the key ingredients of aesthetic literature. The theory of Rasa is elaborated in 6th and 7th chapters. I have already told you that this treatise includes 36 chapters 
and in 6th and 7th chapter you will find the elaboration of rasa theory now what is rasa and what is bhav and what is the relation between them what's their role in literature and how is it important means why they are important for us to know we'll discuss all about it in further slides at first we see what does rasa mean in general term rasa means in general term we can uh, have the meanings like uh, juice flavor liquid essence all these can be the synonym of this term rasa but all these meanings don't give the exact meaning of rasa in literary terms frankly speaking no word can define it perfectly yet we uh, search uh, if we search another word for it it means um, we can find another word for it sentiment or emotion which is aesthetically evoked in the heart of the audience or the spectators according to bharat muni rasa is aesthetic pleasure and bhava is psychological state of mind he highlights this relation or interconnection in this line the na bhav heno asti raso na bhavo ras varjita it means that rasa is not created without bhava and bhava has no existence if rasa is not produced there or it is not created thus emotion and psychological state of mind cause each other to manifest themselves now to make it more clear bhava can be considered as the physical body and rasa its soul now one thing is to be noted that rasa can be relished only in artistic situation not in common situations it is emphasized by bharat muni and it uh, you should know the clear meaning of it why has he said so he he said so because notion can be called rasa if it is not aesthetically excited or provoked uh, i am giving you the example the actors who play the part of romeo J romeo juliet cannot relish the aesthetic pleasure of shringar rasa that emotion that rasa can be experienced only by the spectators or uh, because they are not the active bearers of the emotions rather they are the seers or the observers let me make it more clear with another example suppose a man has lost his son his untimely death makes his father deeply shocked he can cry bitterly he can feel sadness to the core of the heart but we cannot speak of him that he is in the karuna rasa but when we read about the heart rendering psychological condition of the fathers in the stories like the fly by mansfield and the lament by chekhov we are drenched with the pathetic feelings or karuna rasa to the core of the heart in both of the stories they have um, you can find uh, them to bear the death of their sons in young age their psychological state of grief finds resemblance or identification with our sense of sorrow and invokes karuna rasa in our hearts that's why he said said uh, already said here that uh, rasa is not experienced in common situations but only in art form i think that it it is clear now another notable point which bharat muni has referred to must uh, that uh, Mm, uh, the member of the audience must be soft hearted means sahriday according to him uh, a mortal spectator or sahriday must have aesthetic susceptibility power of visualization contemplated uh, heart and the capacity to identify oneself with the aesthetic object now this kind of aesthetic pleasure or rasa is produced from the combination of determinants consequents and transitory states as it is said here by bhanak muni vibhava nubhav vyavichari sanyogat ras nishpatti this is the whole process of the formation of rasa in the psyche deep psyche of human beings let's have a look on is thai bhava sanchari bhava 
विभाव एंड अनुभाव विच आर एलिटेड बाय भरत मिनी ऑन द सोर्स एंड इसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स टू इवोक रसा और इस्थेटिक प्रेशर इन द हार्ट ऑफ द ऑडियंस नो वट इज स्थाई भाव लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ दिस टॉप दे आर इन बॉर्ड दे आर इन एट एंड इनहेरेंट इन ऑल ह्यूमन बींग्स दे कैन नॉट बी गेन्ड थ्रू ट्रेनिंग दे आर रिलेटेड टू आर इनर कॉन्शियसनेस एंड डीप रूटेड इन द ह्यूमन साइकी अदर भावास विच आर मैंशन हियर इन रस सूत्र दे आर जस्ट सबॉर्डिनेट टू स्थाई भावा According to Bharat Muni, these sthayi bhavas are eight in numbers. We'll discuss them further. Let's have the idea of other terms used in Rasa Sutra. Next is Sanchari Bhava. As its name denotes, these emotions are moving. They remain wandering always. They are also called Vyavichari as <coughs> because they don't remain with a person for a long time. They come and disappear. like bubbles these transitory feelings are 33 in numbers as mentioned by bharat muni it can be more clear with an example because examples make the whole concept very clear in the mind of the listeners so uh, i am giving you one example here suppose suppose you are in love with someone and you are waiting for him and he is late you may be jealous just imagine what kind of emotions will come in your mind at that time you may be jealous by thinking his other engagement with someone you may have a fear by anticipating some mis happening with him simultaneously you may be blushful by remembering some coaxing words which are uttered in your ears or you may be angry at that time for his late coming thinking that he has no importance for you and no importance for the time of meeting but the dominating emotion behind all these uh, temporary sentiments is love what is that emotion which is behind all these emotions that is love so love is the sthayi bhav of shringar ras and you will know uh, about this uh, ras means shringar ras uh, you will know further in uh, next slides but it is quite clear it should be quite, quite clear for you that this uh, dominating rasa is shringar rasa here and all those uh, uh, transitory emotions like anger jealousy fear these are vyavichari bhava now we see that vibhava and anubhava they also play a great important role vibhava is the cause of any basic emotion in general term in any piece of literature it is called an excitant stimulator it is of two kinds alamban and uddeepan now what is the dis- difference then uh, the characters who are acting on the stage and arising the bhav of particular rasa they are alamban vibhava and background on the stage nature and enhancing situations they are uddeepan vibhava you you can uh, remember here you can mention here the storm scene in king lear that can be an example you can understand with another example of hamlet also uh, when uh, gertrude's hasty marriage to claudius uh, the brother of uh, her murderer husband and same banquet of marriage and funeral and frequent visits of the ghost of his father these kind of things which happened in that drama in the starting of that drama these are the determinants which stimulate the pathetic emotion these stimulating situations are enhancer or can be called uddeepan while claudius and gertrude can be said alamban or the stimulating characters then we come to anubhava anubhava are the external display of the emotion provoked by vibhavas according to bharat muni there are eight rasas ninth rasa was uh, further added by uh, abhinav gupta abhinav gupta was the great commentator of natya shastra but bharat muni has uh, mentioned eight rasas 
The formation of rasa is related to three categories of emotions. Klisht, Aklisht and Tatasth. Tatasth is not mentioned here because that includes only ninth rasa which was further added. In further slide, uh, I'll, I have included that also. So now you should understand this Klisht and Aklisht. Klisht emotions are against our liking and compatible to our uh, instincts of pleasure. Yet they occupy the same potency to pour out rasa in our mind. Klisht emotions include pathetic means karuna, fearful means bhayanak and nauseating means vivhats and horrible rasa means rodra rasa. While aklisht emotions are those which provide jovial mood and happy mood and which are homogeneous to our wishes and desires also. It includes Shingara rasa, hasya rasa, veera rasa and adhut rasa. And uh, the third one which I have not mentioned here that is tatas. Uh, tatas is the state of mind when we are at equal distance from pain to pleasure. It contains shanta rasa. So these are the nine rasas and each rasa is governed by respective god. First is shingar or erotic rasa. We know that this rasa includes love, fraternity and union between man and women. In it, there may be happy ending or the separation means a yoga shrangara or yoga shrangara at last. Its ruling god is Lord Vishnu. Why Lord Vishnu? Because in Indian theology, the love between Radha and Krishna is considered the eternal symbol of love and symbol of eternal longing also. As there was not happy ending uh, of their love, but even that. So Lord Vishnu rules this rasa as uh, Krishna was the embodiment of him. Next is comic rasa. That is Hasya rasa, which causes laughter. Comic scenes or comic situations which evoke this rasa and uh, it becomes the comic situation and it is governed by the deity Pramathas. Then we see Karuna Rasa, the emotion of sadness and uh, 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 sorrowful feelings includes this Rasa. And its ruling god is Lord Yama, the god of death. As we know, death is the greatest fear of the world, Abhinivesh, the fear of death. And as it is the greatest fear, so uh, Yama can be only the deity of this Rasa. It causes pathetic emotion, karuna. That's why it is associated with Lord Yama. Then we have furious Radra Rasa. With it, the emotion of anger is associated and that's why this Rasa is ruled by Radra. Rudra, as it is Radra. So Rudra is the another name of Lord Shiva. And Shiva is also known as Nataraj. And uh, in this reference, he is called the ruling deity of Nata. So, Nata that is performed, Nata is everything that is performed like dance or drama, anything. Next is Veer Rasa. Veer, mainly this Rasa is associated with glorious achievements or the deeds of men in ancient time. As men were projected to be heroic and women were considered just as a victims in our ancient classical literature. It is ruled by Lord Dhra because of being uh, regarded as the king of courts and uh, also because of this uh, Indra's blessings make people pretty heroic. We cannot forget his blessed son Arjun. His blessed son Arjun uh, also exemplified the bravery and heroic acts. Next is Vibhats rasa. It means something you don't like to watch. Now you can ask the thing that when we don't want to see a particular thing, can that thing give us any pleasure or any enjoyment? Can such feelings be called rasa? Yes, of course. You like it even with the sense of disgust. When we see horror movies in which weird things happen, like uh, like head is separated from the body, or or just like uh, just like a very bizarre things, like intestines come out of somebody's mouth, we don't switch off even then. 
We don't switch off the TV, do you? We don't run away from there even. We still take interest in watching them. Why? Because it has a deep psychological connection with our minds. I have already told you that eight sthai bhavas are already remains always in our psyche, deep depth of the psyche. They are permanent. And when they are there, they, are, uh, they find an identification with the presentation. The artistic emotion finds identification with the dominating psychological state of our mind. And in this way, rasa is formed or evoked. And this is uh, ruled by Mahakal, again another name of Shiva. It seems very much linked to Bhayanaka rasa. Actually, Vibhatsa rasa has the sense of disgust, while Vayanak rasa creates the frightened emotions, fearful emotions. And Kala rules this Vayanak rasa. Finally, we come to the eighth rasa, that is Adbhuta rasa, or the marvelous. Lord Brahma, who is considered to be the creator of this universe, is associated with this particular rasa. Why Brahma? Well, because this world is a wonderful creation and everything in it is full of wonderful things. So, Adbhuta Rasa is presided by the creator Brahma. Here you can note that these Rasas are governed by the trinity of gods. Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. All are involved in these Rasas. So, till now, it has been clear to you that rasa is sentiment of human psyche, bhava is a psychological state of mind, is thai bhava is a stable or basic mood of human beings, vyavichari bhava is transitory or complementary uh, psychological state of mind, vibhavas are stimulating determinants, and anubhava is consequent or effect following the rasa of rise of emotion. So this is in concise way. You can understand all these things till now. So that's all for today. In the next video, uh, we will continue to be indulged deeper into, the, into this theory with the elaboration of nine rasas in detail. Keep watching. Bye. Thank you.